No time for an interesting hook this week. We've got a lot to get through. Let's go. Hello, hello. Come on in, grab a cuppa, make yourself at home. It's time for the monthly floss tube slash general craft goal roundup. Yeah, it really rolls off the tongue. If you're new here, hello. My name is Michelle, aka The Giddy Stitcher. I'm an enthusiastic multi-crafter who mostly cross-stitches, knits and crochets, but also tentatively dabbles in sewing, soap making, resin crafts, 3D printing, and hopefully soon much more besides. On this channel I show the ups and downs of multi-crafter life, adventures in new crafts, and like in today's video, general craft diaries and vlogs. So if that sounds like the kind of content you might be interested in, you should hang around. I also aim for weekly uploads, which brings me to my grovelling apology. Last week was the first time I failed to upload a video, and most likely nobody actually noticed. But I still feel bad, and I'd just like to say, videos are a ton of work, things happen, I'm still just learning, I'm sorry and please forgive. Now, if you've known me for more than about five seconds, you probably know I can be a little bit of a socially awkward penguin sometimes. So when I started getting shout outs from some lovely floss tubers just after my July-August episode went out, it posed what only the truly overthinking would consider to be a serious dilemma. See, as you've hopefully gathered from the intro, I also do videos that are not floss tube. And I know some people only watch these ones once per month and aren't interested in anything else, which is totally fine. So should I thank people for the shout outs and do my own ones in a non floss tube video where the audience is potentially smaller? Or should I wait until the end of the month and do all of my shout outs in one go in my monthly floss tube video? Or will that annoy people if I end up having too long a shout out section since I'm only doing will it once per month? people get annoyed at me for not thanking them Is there even any enough? point in me doing shout outs when I have such a low number? Just even wondering, all of this should I wait look to like make it crazy more worthwhile? Why are the Hobbit films all in soft focus the entire time? You know what? Let's keep it simple. I appreciate the shout outs. Thank you very much if you have mentioned me in your floss tube this month. If you mentioned me and I have not managed to get round to your video, I'm so sorry. There's just like a lot to catch up on every week. But please know I appreciate it very much anyway. I've added my own shout out section a little bit later in this video. So with that out of the way, let's get on with it. Frost stitch. So let's just start at the start, shall we? The first thing on my August goals list was to find a new blackwork pattern to start to replace the one that I finished last month. Because blackwork is awesome and I love it, and I'm not gonna say more than actual cross stitch, but I'm also not going to not say that. Anyway, I went on a bit of a troll through some shops and down an Etsy rabbit hole, as you do, and I was considering all kinds of awesome blackwork patterns like this or this. But then I saw a tiny thumbnail and I knew without even clicking through that this was the one. Behold! Steampunk World Map by a shop called Circle Cross on Etsy. They do have other patterns in the same style, but I am all about the awesomeness of maps, to the point that I follow the map pawn subreddit and everything. So this was really a no-brainer for me. I even love the suggested colours, which is really rare for me, and I think they'll look great in our living room. So to that end, I decided if it's going to be displayed in our living room, I should invest in some slightly nicer looking fabric than my usual Ada. And that is how I ended up buying my first ever even weave. Here's my progress so far. I've started in the centre of the map with Africa, and I am attempting to make a cool time lapse of this that you'll hopefully see one day. But it's been a little bit of a faff so far, so we'll have to see how that turns out. How pretty is this? I love it so much. I'll put up a close-up detail shot for you on the screen now because my camera has a bit of an issue with focusing on anything closer than this. We make do with what we have, right? The fabric is 28 count Ecru Even Weave. Yeah, I believe it's DMC brand. I purchased this from a shop called Enchanted Needle here in the UK. This is my first experience of stitching over two and I did miscount on the very first circle that I did, but since then, it's gone absolutely fine. I got used to it straight away, so I'm kind of impressed with myself there. The only problem with this is that it's much more difficult to stitch in hand, which is how I usually do things. Ada is quite stiff fabric, and I don't know really if you can tell, but this really isn't. I kind of think I might have to give in and buy a Q-snap or some kind of other frame to do this one justice, because I'm just a little bit worried that either my tension is going to be too loose or I'm going to damage the fabric in some way by handling it so much. 
Of course, as you might already know, I am extremely tight with money, so first things first, I need to exhaust the DIY possibilities for this before I go buying anything pre-made. In fact, September seems like as good a time for that as any. In terms of the actual stitching, I'm pretty happy with progress so far, but I'd like to see if I can get Europe and Asia complete by the time October rolls around. That's two goals already. Bam! All right, let's see what was next on the list. Ah, yes. You caught me. I have failed a goal. This pixels that made us stitch along continues to cause me trouble at every turn. Curse my habit of signing up to things without figuring out how much work they'll be first. <laughs> So for the uninitiated, this is what it should look like when it's complete. It includes about 200 different colours, most of which I don't own, so it's going to be quite a pricey project all in. The idea from last month's video was to spread the cost by buying the floss for one letter at a time as and when I need it. So in the meantime, August's stitching goal on this was to complete stitching with all of the colours in the air that I already owned. Now, technically, I could sit here and tell you that I totally smashed this goal because you have no idea how many of them I already owned, but honesty is the best policy. So, no, I did not get that done. This is the bag of colours that I've already stitched in the air, and this is the bag that's still to go. There are more bobbins in this one and more skeins in this one, so it looks a little uneven, but I'd say it's about 50-50. I'll put up a shot of last month's progress so you can compare, and this is where we are now. I felt like there wasn't a huge difference, but actually looking at them side by side, it's gone all right, I would say. This did take a surprising amount of time just because of the new method for selecting floss, which I'll talk about in a second, but slow and steady wins the race, right? I'm continuing on at my admittedly slow pace, and I will get there eventually. The other half of this goal, which isn't written down because there wasn't enough space, was to actually buy the remaining floss for the A. That turned out to be about 25 quid's worth, which is quite a lot of money for me right now, so spreading out the cost is definitely the way to go. Of course, at this rate, it will take me the rest of the year just to get the second letter done, so that 25 quid is going to buy a lot of hours of entertainment. And anyway, at least spending the money gets me half a point on the August goals, right? Right? So my strategy at the moment, as you saw, is to have all of the colours that I need to stitch on this letter in one bag and then transfer them to another bag after I stitched. However, rather than following any kind of sensible system for which colour to stitch when, I've just adopted the habit of pulling a colour at random out of the to be stitched bag. This means that sometimes I will pull out a colour that is used to stitch a big chunk and sometimes I'll pull a colour that is only used to stitch one or two stitches. The idea is that I want to avoid the situation I got into with the G, where I did all of the big colours first. It looked almost complete at a cursory glance, but when I added it up, I actually still had 14 colours left to stitch, because so many of them just needed two stitches. It was super demoralising, and I just want to avoid that this time. So I will report back and let you know if this way worked any better. So I guess the goal for September here is actually just to roll over Augusts. Let's aim for this to never ever happen again, shall we? My next cross-stitch goal was to make good progress on Alpine by Satsuma Street. I hadn't got too far with this by the time of last month's update because of a stupid mistake that involved frogging and redoing an entire mountain. But this month... Now that's what I call progress. Honestly, I'm so into this pattern and I feel like it shows because this is definitely quite fast stitching for me. I'm really loving the big blocks of colour, it's such a nice break from certain other projects that we won't mention, which I should probably bear in mind before buying new patterns. Yes, it's simpler and it's less impressive looking than a big confetti piece, but I'm doing this as a fun hobby after all, so I should probably stick to stitching things I really enjoy. This is a winner. The colours in this make me so happy too. I mean, Okay, it's Satsuma Street, so you kind of know what you're getting there, but her designs were what got me into cross-stitch in the first place, and I'm happy to report that six years later, I believe it is, these patterns still make me as happy as they did back then. This orange, man, I cannot get over how much I love this orange. So far, this is all the called for DMC. You'll notice I've been skipping around a bit, and that's because these are colours that I don't currently own. 
I'm not sure if I'm going to substitute for ones that I do own or if I need to buy new ones. I need to uh, cross-reference a little bit, especially since I just bought all those new colours for the pick stitch sal. This is definitely a project that does not need a hard and fast goal to get me to work on it, but let's say I'll work out a plan for the substitutions or purchasing new colours. I'll tell you what that is. That's a smart goal right there. Get on the list. The fourth thing on my goals list was to work some more on a fun Halloween pattern that had popped into my head shortly before the last video. I wanted to get the design done and have the sample at least halfway stitched up. Since then, I've actually changed track with that design a couple of times and will probably do so again. But I'm happy to report that I have gotten to a reasonable end point and have made good progress with the sample stitching too. I can't show you just yet, but I'm awarding myself the point and you're just going to have to trust me. All right, four projects in, and that's actually all of the cross stitch I've done this month. Shocking, I know, by floss tube standards. I do not know how you all find the time. Of course, it might just be that I'm super easily distracted and also a very slow stitcher. Yeah, that might be it. One thing I have been getting on with this month, though, is making a short list of full coverage patterns, since that's on my stitchy bucket list to try soon. Thank you to everybody here and on Instagram who sent me suggestions of where they like to shop for full coverage. After many, many hours of browsing the various suggested sites, I settled on two that I really like, both from Pen Free Crafts. I'll add links to them in the description as per. There's just one problem with these patterns. They're kind of both very cream and brown. On the left, we have Autumn Stories. Technically, winter is my favourite season, but autumn is a close second, and who doesn't love all the oranges and bronzes and whatnot that go with this theme? On the right, a pattern called Clockwork Dragon. See, I asked my boyfriend what sort of art he would like to hang in the house. Unfortunately, all he could think of was pop culture posters and dragons. Now, I have nothing against dragons at all, but a lot of art involving them can be a bit cheesy, I think it's fair to say. So this pattern jumped out at me as a bit of a cooler take on the theme. The background in Autumn Stories is speckled and it has this cool gradient, so I think there are probably more colours involved in that than I immediately would expect. But the clockwork dragon, I mean, surely beyond this one background motif, that's just kind of plain cream, right? I know I just said how much I'm enjoying Alpine because of the big blocks of colour, but I feel like this might be a step too far. Full coverage connoisseurs, what do you think? Would this drive you insane? Maybe it makes more sense to just stitch that whole thing on a suitable coloured fabric and leave off the background? Although that kind of defeats the purpose of do my first full coverage, I guess. Mm. Anyway, advice welcome. Which one of these is your favourite? Or would you avoid this much beige like the plague? I'm in no rush to decide, which is probably just as well. Before we move on to other crafts then, welcome to the new section of my Floss Tube video. Floss Tuber shoutouts. Ta-da! I'm going to limit it to two or three shoutouts per month just because I don't want this section to go on forever with everybody I could possibly recommend. But if I do watch and enjoy your videos, rest assured you'll end up in here at some point. <laughs> so firstly and most importantly, Brenda at Obsessive Crafty Dabbler. Brenda holds a special place in my heart for being the very first ever commenter on my channel. Thank you. It absolutely made my day. But also, she has a great floss tube channel. Her videos are on the shorter and snappier side, which I for one very much appreciate. And she's also very talented in general. Quite apart from all the beautiful stitching, she also dyes her own fabric, which is super cool. And she even has a TikTok dedicated to singing. This is one multi-talented lady. She also has the most soothing voice. I could listen to her talk for hours. Sorry, not sorry, if that's weird. The second person I'd like to mention is Nicole from Stitchy Lemon. What can I say about Nicole? She's German, but speaks brilliant English. However, she does videos in both languages, which is a really interesting approach. She chooses pretty patterns and shows them off in these really put together, well lit and produced videos that just scream, I have my life together. I'm well jealous. Nicole recently hit a thousand subscribers, so it's actually a little bit unlikely that you would be watching me and never have heard of her. But if you haven't, you're welcome. And last but not least, Rin from Crafty Rin. A fellow fan of all the crafts, yes. I believe Rin did make 
videos about other crafts back in the day. However, recently their channel is focused more just on floss tube. They have just like the cutest, warmest personality that really just makes me happy to watch. And also really good taste in t-shirts and music, which counts for a lot in my book. I believe their channel is only setting at around 150 subscribers, which is way too low. So yeah, just go show some love. You won't regret it. All right, that just about sums up cross stitch for this month. Other than the new needle minders that I made, or should I say attempted to make, which I'll show off in the other crafts section. I've added chapter titles to the description below the video so you can skip around if you want to go ahead and watch that part instead. Or if you're leaving us here, that's absolutely fine. Thank you very much for watching this far and I hope we'll see you next time. Everybody else, let's see what else I've been up to this month because it's quite a lot. Knit and crochet. Okay, I have to start with the big finish for this month because I'm really excited but also just super relieved to be done with it. You might have spotted already that I'm actually wearing my finished Carla crop top by Pip and Pin, which is the pattern that I got for free back in, I think, May and had to cast on immediately. It's taken so long to finish basically because I just made so many mistakes, I mucked it up right from the start and it never went smoothly at any point. But that said, it's nothing to do with the pattern. It's a perfectly straightforward pattern and that is all on me. Let me just give you a twirl here. I added a couple of inches to the overall length. It was supposed to be more cropped than this, but I don't think I'd have worn it like that. It's just short enough to make me feel brave, but also long enough that I can just wear it on a normal day-to-day -day basis with high-waisted jeans, so it's worked out perfectly for me. The yarn is just your basic Socks Yeah yarn by Koopnitz, which I use all the time for actual socks, and I really like it. I know how it's going to wear, I know it's soft enough, because I have quite sensitive skin, so some wool content yarns can be a little itchy for me, but I know that this one works fine. I would definitely use it for clothes again. So, a purple boat neck top. If you happened to watch my second ever video where I talk about intentional crafting, you might know that this ticks all of the boxes as far as my new wardrobe rules go. So it's definitely going to get a lot of wear. The ultimate end goal is to get into that whole crop tops with long dresses or high-waisted skirts look that I really like on other people. This is obviously step one. Step two we'll revisit in the other crafts section. Also in knitting then, we had a stretch goal on the list. That's what the italics mean. I decided that on a whim last month. Anyway, I've been knitting very slowly on a pair of very posh socks since about May, and I'm not really in any rush for them to be finished, because I just love having a sock project lying around for those kind of 10 minute stretches of downtime where you don't want to pick up anything bigger. But last month, one of them was so close to being finished that I couldn't resist putting it on the list. And now it is finished. The second sock was cast on just this past weekend and I'm going to leave these off the goals list this month because I just kind of want to chill and see where they end up. I'm trying to be sensible here and not add too much to the list, okay? Now apparently, I don't know if you heard, but Sunday August the 15th was National Granny Square Day. I don't know which country the national applies to, I don't know anything else about it whatsoever, other than the fact that a local-ish yarn shop was hosting an outdoor event to celebrate. So I convinced my good friend and newbie crochet Tom to come with me, and more importantly, to drive me there in his car. We came second or third, depending how you count it, in the Name That Shade of Stylecraft competition. We totally failed to win anything in the Tombola, but we did eat quite a lot of flapjack, which made up for it. Oh yeah, and we also made granny squares. He went for the neat and tidy solid square approach, while I went a little bit more jazzy. Look, right, I've been crocheting for most of a decade and I'd never made a granny square before, so go big or go home. One of the things I always love about looking at granny square projects is that you can just kind of throw in basically whatever colours you want and it somehow comes out looking like a thing. So I'm really testing that hypothesis here. In hindsight, I wish I'd used darker greens, but eh, you use what you've got. And this is turning out pretty fun anyway, I think. It could still be used to make any number of things, but my original plan was to make two of these and turn it into sort of a boxy t-shirt. I will continue on as if that's still the plan, and if it happens to turn into a poncho or something instead, then so be it. 
I think this will be my make decent progress goal for this month because I don't want to commit to completing it, but it is really fun to work on. Sorted. A couple of weeks ago, I put out a video about my attempts at getting organised ready for the season of Christmas craft fairs and the big annual Etsy rush. It's basically all crochet and I've made a good start on the smaller items from the list. But I'd like to get to the point where I have at least one of each planned product made just to make sure my time estimates in the spreadsheet are correct. So let's just add that to the list while we're here. In one last bit of crochet news, I have this. He's a test run for a little ghost fella as part of the Great British Ghost Hunt. I'll not go into too much detail about that right now, but basically it's like a random acts of kindness type of deal, but with small crafted ghosts. I will do a proper video on this at some point as we get closer to the time, but in the meantime, this guy is looking pretty cute. Other crafts. All right, so what else has been going on this month? First up, I had a crack at making my own needle minders. We have a lot of resin and associated bits and pieces lying around the house because we recently got into making our own cool dice. So I'm basically now always looking for other interesting things to use resin with. So in my last video, I did just that with some laser cut pieces from a friend. In the end, I came out of it with these three new needle minders. Obviously they're a bit samey, but it was a science experiment to test out different techniques on each and see how they turned out. I am officially full of ideas for future Needleminder projects, but honestly I have no idea when I'll get round to them. If you didn't catch that video, I will link it up in the corner so you can watch the full mess unfold at your leisure. Back on the August goals list then, there were a couple of sewing projects. There was a small drawstring bag project and the player suit that I have been threatening to sew since literally April. So the bag. Myself and my Instagram bestie decided that because sewing makes us both kind of nervous, it made sense to do a sew along where we both tackled this simple project together and we would be able to provide moral support. Sadly, I'm here in the UK and she is in Tennessee, so that's a little bit far to travel for a sew along. Thankfully, through the internet you can do anything if you have enough enthusiasm. So, let me just quickly play a clip from last month's video. Even sewing the drawstring bag should, in theory, only take a couple of hours, even for beginners like us. I'm, I'm really going to eat those words. And uh, yeah, Instagram bestie, if you are watching, please don't be mad at me for saying that and cursing us. <laughs> yeah, so the night before we were due to start this project, her sewing machine broke. As in, got stuck in backwards stitching mode and would no longer go forwards. That's on me. Okay, I admit. Lesson learned. No more jinxing. We decided to go through with it anyway though, and after much panic and deciphering the pattern and panicking some more, we both had usable bags by the end of it. Here is hers, which again, way more impressive than mine because she was using a machine that would only stitch backwards. And here's my little cactus bag. I absolutely love it. We learned how to use interfacing. We learned how to make a cool square bottom so it can stand up on its own. And while I'm not the biggest fan of it just having the drawstring come out of this one front hole, I was very impressed at how tidy the method was for making that hole. And so if I was doing it again, I would probably try and add an extra one and have the drawstrings pullable from both sides at once. You might recognize the cactus fabric from this dress that I made back in April. I actually have a ton of this left, so you will probably see it cropping up in other projects from time to time. Lucky it's awesome, right? The bag is actually reversible, although I just went with plain green inside because anything fancier seemed a little bit pointless for my purposes. It's been carrying around my sock project all month and is generally just super cute. Really proud of my top stitching as well, which is something I never thought I'd say. So we did this right at the beginning of the month and you would think the boost of confidence would spur me on to quickly complete the play suit as well, right? Not so much. Okay, real talk. I have been saying I'll sew this play suit for months, literally since April. And I think a big part of that is just that I feel this pressure to have ever increasingly complex projects on the go, but there's got to be a reason that I keep psyching myself out over this particular one. It's obviously a summer project and now summer is almost over. I bought the fabric, I assembled the pattern, I even made a rough muslin of the top section to make sure I was on the right track, and I just still can't quite bring myself to start. So you know what? 
I'm just going to go with my gut on this one. I don't feel ready. I feel like it's too complicated and I'm going to ruin it and waste the money that I spent on the fabric. I'm not usually one to shy away from a challenge and I jump into new craft both feet first. But there's just something about this. There's a voice inside telling me not to do it. And so I'm just going to listen. I'm going to take this one off the list. I'm going to revisit it next year when I have hopefully had a lot more sewing practice. Decision made. No regrets. On that note though, with the finish of my knitted crop top, I need a skirt to go with it. That seems easier to sew and I just have much less internal resistance to it for some reason. And I already found the perfect pattern. Teresa from Lost My Thread recently made herself a patty pocket skirt and she put out this amazing video on Instagram of all the things she could fit in her pockets at once. This thing is just the dream. Okay. So I got to fabric shopping. Something in black and white seemed smart because then it could go with pretty much anything and I wanted the pattern to be kind of subtle and understated for the exact same reason. But then I found this and I could not tear myself away. A quick Instagram poll confirmed my suspicion that I would be crazy not to and so I guess we're doing a giant chimp skirt now? Understated is overrated anyway, I guess. <laughs> this month I just about have the budget to buy the fabric and the pattern and I want to get everything assembled and prepped. I'm not going to add the actual sewing goal yet just because this is a busy month but I am a lot less scared of this. My gut is telling me I can do this one so I know we'll be okay. Having it in time for Christmas would be pretty cool but most likely I will get round to it before then, I think. Step one, buy all the stuff. Smart goal, ding. So that's seven goals for September. Not too bad, I don't think. We are creeping up there towards the amount we had on August's list, but if I'm honest, even when making that list, I did know that one or two of them might be trouble. None of them are really worrying me too much this month, especially since some of them are just plain shopping. The biggest one is probably still the pick stitch sal, so I'm going to try and focus on that a bit more towards the beginning of the month and not give myself a rush situation at the end. I really do not want another goal rollover situation. I am ready and raring to go. Real life. The big real life event this month is that fantasy football season is starting up again. And as commissioner of our league, that means a lot of work. Hassling people, sending invites, getting new people set up, working out the schedule, setting up the Canva template for our weekly league newsletter, and of course, actually doing the draft. It's just been a whole thing. I won the championship last year, so despite putting all of this hard work in behind the scenes, I'm also somehow the league villain at the moment. That doesn't seem entirely fair, but I guess it's how it goes. Is anybody else out there playing? I would love to find more people in this particular Venn diagram of hobbies. In other news, we also got to visit friends for a joint birthday party last weekend. The same friend group and the same venue as last month, but hey, after a year of barely seeing anybody, this counts as a hectic social life, okay? Just as a side note, I would like to very much recommend against ever playing this game. It is truly terrible. I also have a bit of sad news this month, which is that we've decided we're probably going to sell our camper van. We've had it for a few years and we've made some great memories, but the fact is, with our life plan for the next few years, we're just not going to have enough chance to use her and make it worth the cost of maintaining such an old vehicle. Makes me sad, but on the other hand, when I was a kid, this was like my dream. I wanted to travel in a motorhome and I thought it was a thing that only the richest people could possibly ever achieve. So I have lived that dream, albeit for a short amount of time. It would blow childhood me's mind. The last thing that happened this month is that I swore not to join a game jam and then joined the game jam. You might not know exactly what a game jam is, but rest assured, you'll hear a lot more about that soon. All right, I have definitely waffled for long enough today. For such a short month between Flosstube videos, I think I managed to get quite a lot done. The failed play suit doesn't really bother me as much because that's less of a fail and more of a decision to postpone. However, the pick stitch cell, oh, I am absolutely fuming. You might notice the conspicuous absence of Christmas gift planning in my goals for this month. And that's not because I'm being secretive, it's because I'm really bad at planning and no doubt you'll see ever increasing levels of panic in future updates. Oh god, what am I doing? On that note, I'm gonna head off and immediately get cracking on some of these goals. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave me a like and a comment. 
I love to get to know new viewers. If you didn't like this video, well, leave me a comment anyway and tell me why. But seriously though, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Now, I know which are going to be my next two videos, but I'm not sure which order they'll be going out in. However, at least one of them. I've never seen anything like this on a craft YouTube channel before, and I'm not sure if it's going to be a hit or an absolute disaster, but there's something intriguing for you to watch out for. You'll just have to subscribe to find out, I guess. Gotcha. All right, have a brilliant rest of your day. I'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep making cool stuff. Bye.